Uh, hi, my name is uh, Theo Priestley. I'm the uh, Global Chief Evangelist at Software AG. So, big data. Um, today I presented on big data. Uh, B for big data, it's past, it's present and it's future. So I just wanted to give a little insight into what, what big data is, where it's come from as a trend. Um, it's uh, uh, where we are with big data right now and obviously what, uh, what the future may hold. So big data for me, it's been talked about uh, most recently in the last five to six years. However, it's been around for decades. Um, in the presentation I gave, um, I gave an idea that NASA has actually been playing with big data um, to put men on the moon for years. Um, that's an example where they take so much information, astronomical, literally in size and, and in context, um, uh, and put uh, and turn that into traje to trajectory information, to velocity information, to understand uh, the, the moon and the earth and the, the relation of getting one, you know, getting men from one end uh, to the other. And that's a perfect example of big data. Um, and the thing that big data that everyone seems to concentrate on is, you know, the big part. It's just about the size. Um, and what I try to do is turn that around and say, well, actually, it's not. Let's not think about the numbers here. Um, let's actually think about what we can do with big data. And so, um, you know, citing a Gartner analyst, Doug Laney, you know, we talk about uh, the volume of data. So that's obviously the size of it, the, uh, the the velocity of data. So we're now dealing with data in real time streams. Um, it's coming from a variety of sources, which is the third V, um, and the veracity, uh, which is, um, uh, do we actually trust the information that we've been given, uh, that we're collecting? 27% um, of, um, of a recent survey of CIOs basically said that they don't actually trust the, um, the information that, 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 that they're gathering. So we have a, a, a large number of challenges um, for big data. Uh, around again, around the size, but uh, what we do to extract the uh, fifth V, what I call the fifth V, which is the value. So, what is the value of big data? And, and it's getting that insight um, from uh, the analytics around big data to help with uh, process optimization, to help with new customer um, acquisition, new customer uh, retention, and uh, customer strategy. So, for example, customer experience management is creating new experiences for the customers using uh, the data not only in the organization but also in the, uh, the, the world around us and, and the data that um, customers uh, generate. Um, big data also gives insight into the operational aspect as well so uh, part of that is evolving into intelligent business operations and again a, uh, an example that I use quite often is um, in 2012 MIT helped a local authority in uh, the United States understand an entire supply chain process which was all around garbage collection. Um, understand that through using uh, new techniques, through using big data, um, using RFID tags on pieces of rubbish to understand just what happens when uh, a citizen throws out the rubbish, what the supply chain is, what the handoffs is and what the true nature of the cost of that running that process was. Um, for many organizations, not just local authorities, when we think about process optimization, we think, oh, which parts of the steps do we need to remove to make it look more efficient? Um, big data can help you actually understand, well, it, that whole value chain extends throughout the organization into the partner ecosystem, into your third party suppliers. Um, and through that experiment that MIT conducted, they were able to show this local authority that you know, the amount of waste um, and monetary waste uh, literally, um, that was being spent on transporting uh, a rubbish uh, at the end of the day. So there was a $10 printer cartridge that travelled 6,000 kilometres um, and they averaged out the actual cost um, to $5 a kilometre. So to basically transport that one unit um, cost uh, the local authority or certainly the impact, the true nature, was $30,000. And, you know, for a citizen and a public, you know, for a public service, that's really cost, uh, cost inefficient. Um, and that information helped expose and make that uh, entire process transparent. Um, things that Software AG have done for clients and customers as well, um, there's a telecom provider, a uh, large telecom provider in, in, in Europe um, who does more or less the same thing. So they analyze the customer profiles against business events um, and business rules to create new customer retention strategies and it's helped them uh, have a revenue uplift of uh, tens of millions of euros 
Um, and again, that's something that big data can help with. It's creating a new customer experience, but using it in a way that is targeted to individual customers. So whereas before we tend to think of um, customers as a segmentation or a demographic that involves large numbers of people, um, say for example, uh, you know, 30 to 40 year old uh, females, uh, we can now actually target, using big data, we can target individual people to their needs, uh, knowing so much about them. Um, big data now is, is uh, and the analytics is, is about lifting a lot of the transactional information that's held, been held in databases for years um, and making it more transparent, making it more contextual. So um, again, in the presentation I gave, um, I likened it to uh, driving a car where you have your, your kind of real-time information is your dashboard, what you're getting on the speedometer um, and other factors. Your rear view mirror gives you insight into the past and that's your historical information that you hold in you know, in, in large databases and mainframes. But your windscreen is actually the view to the future when you combine historical trends with real-time information um, and big data, you can actually begin to understand, well, what could happen if I change this? Or what could happen if an event happened? Um, how can I take advantage of that to both from an operational perspective, but also from a, a consumer perspective? We look to the future now. So what is the future of big data? So, you know, slightly tongue-in-cheek, I made a sort of analogy towards um, Johnny Mnemonic, which was a film back uh, a few years ago um, with um, Keanu Reeves, and uh, people were big data, were examples of big data. Um, information was held in their DNA, and this is actually happening now. So there have been proven experiments where one gram of DNA can hold um, two petabytes of, uh, of information. So you could actually say in a few years time, five, 10, 20 years time, we could actually be components of the big data um, ecosystem. Um, but one of the most important things that we need to look for uh, when we think about big data in the future is, is what are the questions that we have to ask of big data? So we, um, more often than not, when I, when I speak to organizations, um, they collect big data, they analyze it, but they're asking the same questions, they're producing the same reports, and they get the same answers. What you really need to think about is what are the questions that I was told that were impossible to ask and answer a few years ago that I can now do and now have the answers for using big data. Big thank you uh, to IT News Africa for this uh, for this interview. It's been a pleasure.